One of the most iconic medium-sized trees for the south, of course, is the crepe myrtle, Lagerstromia indica. And I've got a great example of one behind me here in late summer in full bloom. And why is this grown? It, grow, it blooms on current season's growth uh, and is a great bloomer throughout the summer. It is a very tough landscape tree and one that people use all throughout the southeastern United States. Now, Lagerstromia indica is the most common species of crepe myrtle in commerce. However, uh, there is another commonly used species, Lagerstromia ferrarii, and there's also hybrids between those two species. Uh, one of the most popular cultivars that's a hybrid between those two species is called Natchez. Uh, but the ones with the most colorful blooms, the ones where you get pink and purple and a variety of different bloom colors, are typically Lagerstromia indica. Now this is a deciduous tree. Uh, it's from China, the Himalayas, into Japan, hardy from zones 6 through 9 can get anywhere from 6 to 30 foot tall. Uh, there's actually even more like ground cover ones, very small, dwarf ones below 6 foot. Uh, but just for an average, we'll say a cultivar dependent 6 foot to 30 foot tall, spreading out 6 foot wide uh, to 25 or 30 foot wide as well. And so a variety of sizes, it's hard to put a specific size on a crepe myrtle because there are so many different sized varieties out there on the market. Now you do see people prune back crepe myrtles quite heavily a lot of time in the spring. Uh, that's not always the best for the form and the overall health of the tree. And so it's best to choose a cultivar uh, that is the right size for the place that you are placing the crepe myrtle. So if you want a crepe myrtle but you only need one, you can only have one that gets 10 foot tall by 10 foot wide, then choose a cultivar that is known to be that size instead of continually pruning back the crepe myrtle. You know, the right plant in the right place is always important. And with crepe myrtles, again, you can really choose a cultivar that's suitable for your landscape situation. Uh, this one in front of me is a dwarf version uh, of crepe myrtle that really only gets three foot high by three foot wide. And so it's a perfect solution right here for this landscape. The blooms are down a little bit lower. And so they've chosen well in this situation. Now, crepe myrtle is known to have beautiful exfoliating bark. And here you see a great example of that. Uh, one uh, insect that has been impacting crepe myrtles is crepe myrtle bark scale. And so that hasn't reached us quite in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, but it has uh, become a major pest in western Tennessee, uh, but it, it will be a, become a more widespread pest. Uh, and really the only way to get rid of it is through herbicide application, uh, or you, you can potentially use scrub brushes and get, the, get that off the trees, which can be a little bit more difficult. So crepe myrtle bark scale uh, is a real problem with crepe myrtles. Here's a landscape tip. Crepe myrtle prefers moist sites, but will survive on dry sites once established.